All right, so uh, hi everybody, uh, and welcome to our guest lecture, Listening in Dreams by Colin Bullock. Um, Colin is a composer and a pianist who writes music, performs on stage with uh, his ensemble and creates sonic experiences. Along the way, Colin has started releasing electronic music and played live sets in clubs. In 2017, he was able to gather commissions by classically oriented institutions and moved over to classical stages to perform with his ensemble as a soloist with sym symphony orchestras and solo concerts. Uh, for electronically augmenting the grand piano, he co-designed a radial loudspeaker specifically for classical concert halls. With such speaker concepts and his label Feral Note, which focuses on music between electronic and acoustic sounds, his aim is to bring underground sounds, artists, and attitudes to classical stages. And today he's going to share with us the dilemmas of the creative, inspirational, and serendipitous aspects of being an artist and the reality of having to make a living, uh, which we have been talking about since the start of the semester. So it's going to be uh, super exciting for us. And without further ado, I would like to give him the word. Um, Khan, it's great to have you with us. And we've been looking forward to listening to your talk. So the floor is yours. Thank you, Asta. Hello, everyone. So my name is Khan, Khan Bulak. And um, yeah, as already mentioned, um, I'm a composer. Mainly, I would put myself in the position of a composer because that's where I have my, um, let's say, most of my um, income and I'm also a pianist but I do not perform pieces by others I specifically only perform my own pieces and sometimes improvise and I go on to collaborate collaborate with different artists such as visual artists and also electronic artists uh, I also have a background in electronic music I've also played club music and uh, in various clubs I, I used to have my first studio in Berlin in a, in a techno club so that was my first, um, you know, the first stage that I got into. And also I have studied sound art and composition. So I'm also active in the installation field. I also do, I, I did a couple of installations, for example, at the Museum Biennale in, um, in Krasnoyarsk and um, a couple of various things uh, here and there. And I also have the label, as Asta already mentioned, Feral Note. And there I am combining all of my interests all together, visual artists. We also have um, very classical people and people who usually tend to play in clubs, but doing something that they usually wouldn't do in a club or in that setting. So it's, it's, it's kind of this experimental field that I've found it just for people to try out different ideas, which is um, also an interesting point to talk about when it comes to um, financial gains, because um, that label has been a very expensive hobby so far. Um, let's go through the, um, through the points uh, I wanted to talk about. Um, also in um, talking with Asta and um, we had this uh, approach of talking about my um, work experience as an artist to begin with. So um, the work of an artist is pretty difficult to put in, uh, put in words because it's, it's, it's something that you become over time and you spend your whole life building upon something. And there, I mean, there is this famous quote you, you've all definitely heard um, Picasso, as he was older, he paints something and then says, within 10 minutes, he paints that. And then he says, there you go, it's um, $40,000. And um, and the reaction is, but well, you just took 10 minutes to do that. Um, and then the, the, the reaction um, of Picasso was, well, you're... You're, you're mistaken, this, this, this painting took 45 or 60 years or whatever age he had, um, it took that long to make. So it's also one of the things where, where people should definitely understand that being an artist does not involve the time frame that it takes to make the work then and there, but it's much more about the, the idea of, of having, um, having built something up until that point. And 
when I go on stage, it's not just me playing there for an hour. It's 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 opening a window into my being for that um, for that time frame. People can look into it, but it's something much more timeless that I'm trying to present at that moment. So, how does this work to communicate this approach to um, to people? It's very difficult to to put it that way because there are many people where you think that they are into art, but in, in in reality, they're usually into the surroundings of art. They're much more into the surroundings of going to a, to a soiree, of an opening at a gallery because you have free champagne and it looks fancy and you can Instagram about it. Or you go to, um, you go to a concert because you want to dress up. And this is, this is kind of, art becomes something like a commodity, whereas it could be something much more, whereas it could be something that leads you into yourself, which could have a therapeutic effect or many, many things can, can go out of there. Um, so that will be um, my experience um, with, the, with the work itself. Um, when I'm working also, I'm a very, I'm a loner when I compose. I, I never collaborate in composing because I cannot, I have no idea how one would write a piece of music together with someone else. I have no idea how that would be possible because to me, I when I compose, I, I write my things in, in, the, in my head. I walk around the park. I, I don't know, while I'm taking a shower, I can, I can write something on a string quartet that I'm writing. And I have various shelves in my head somewhere where, where I have um, motifs and phrases of the pieces. And I don't actually, proceed to write them down until I feel like they're finished. So I have to keep a piece in my head for over a year sometimes. And I try to remember each, every detail. And, um, and that's sometimes obviously very challenging because you need a certain time frame where you can just be, just be yourself and just be on your own and just enjoy what you're doing and completely let go. And that's very difficult to, um, to put in a daily routine as you would, as you would usually do it with a, um, with a work where you can go to somewhere from nine to five or nine to nine, to nine or I don't mind, but usually when you leave the office or leave your workspace, then you're not working. But uh, as an artist, usually you're working 24 seven and, and, it, and it's something that you become. And by doing the things that makes an artist, you become the artist. That's also why I don't quite believe that, um, I don't, I don't, this is something that I usually say, uh, I don't believe in being, I believe in doing. So, because by doing, you define your being. Um, yeah, that, that just as a side note, um, the specific perks or challenges of my sector are numerous. Um, the perks are, when you're an artist or a musician, or usually you have works out there that, that, that have a life without you, um, people are super interested because it's, uh, I had many people come to me after concerts and say, oh, you're alive, amazing. I didn't know composers were still alive. Uh, or, and, then, and then it's something where you can build up a, build up a nice conversation on top. But, and it's super easy to network if you're if you're a musician or, or an artist you get to meet all kinds of people from all kinds of um, uh, sectors and you get invited to um, funny places but on the other side you also have the challenges because um, it's it's nice to be seen with an artist or a musician it's nice to have someone around but it's also this question how how am I integrated in this, in this group of people? How, what am I doing there? What is my actual goal of being there? What, do they gain more than, than what I can get from there? Is it, is it in balance or is there some, some sort of misuse happening there? That's also a question that comes to mind. And also the question is that I already mentioned, who really appreciates art? Who uses it as a commodity to to sell or to polish their, their products uh, or who is, 
and who is deciding about the entries, uh, entry barriers that you have to classical halls, but you also have them in, in techno clubs. It's also not that easy to get to a, to a gig in a club. Probably a little bit easier than getting in the, on stage at Berlin Philharmonic Hall, but it's a, the, you have very harsh entry barriers when you're dealing with art. But on the other side, what is also great is um, the perks of being an artist in 2022, I would say is that technical requirements, all kinds of, um, all kinds of things you might need for doing your artistic job, your artistic work, um, they're super accessible. You can sit down somewhere and as long as you have a have a laptop somehow, um, you will be able to finalize something that is that you can show to other people and you, you can you, you have so much free knowledge out there in the internet. And things have become become very accessible. On the other side, since there are so many people who are also now involved in the the creative work in the in the artistic life it, it it's becoming it's bec becoming very difficult to cut through the noise so this is my experience was that you're super relying on pr managers and you're relying on um, on, on on middlemen even more than you had to back in the day because if it i haven't been active in in the 90s so i can't talk about that but it feels like back then getting the deal was a, was one of the main things, getting a, a label deal or getting on a major publisher. That was the tough thing. And now it's super easy to, not, I mean, not super easy, but it's rather easier to get into those fields because they're taking many more people because they're not working on quality, but they're working with quantity now nowadays. And that is also now making it more difficult to find a way through the noise that's out there. So PR managers are definitely um, one of the challenges because you need to find someone who will be able to explain the work that you're doing, your art or your music, who will be able to explain that properly to newspapers, to magazines, to critiques and uh, to critics and and so they can write proper critiques about you that you can quote in your in your press releases. Um, that's one of the challenges that I've um, also experienced in my in my time. Um, my journey until this point in my career was um, it was very 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 um, <laughs> it was all over the place. Um, I started out. Um, playing the piano is back as I was a kid, um, growing up in Istanbul. So I have a Turkish background, um, but I've been in Germany for quite a while. Um, I was a kid in Istanbul and, uh, and I learned the piano there. Very classically, uh, I used to improvise here and there, but that's about it, nothing fancy. And then um, we moved to Stuttgart as I was a teenager, I was 13. So we came to Stuttgart, and then as I um, as I grew up there, um, I was following more and more the musical path. But then um, it was not really wanted by my parents that I had become a musician. So I decided to go on and study mathematics and finance. Um, did not finish that because I started a band, and then I got into electronic music and quit quit my studies and moved to Berlin and started studying audio engineering, which I finished. And then after that, I did, um, I did sound art and composition at Berlin University of Arts. And after that, I have been working as a composer and um, performing live on stage. So that was my, um, my path. But on, on, on the way along there, I, I also did some side jobs like market research, some um, the, the mar Turkey, Turkish market entry um, of Kayak, this booking app. Um, I, was, <laughs> I was working for Kayak back, back then for a while and I, I did all kinds of things. I also did event management here and there or um, 
I also played in uh, played in hotel lobbies as a pianist and that kind of thing. I was improvising uh, in in there. So it was it was a lot of things at the same time that I was trying. That was also um, now it feels like a gain, but back then it felt like a distraction. So that's also one thing that I realized that on my path, many things that felt like a distraction back then or a fragmentation of my of my focus of my attention they seem to they seem to turn into strengths over time because i had a variety of experiences then and i could i could learn from what i had um what i had what i've been through and and, and seen so um studying audio engineering was a decision because i wanted to be close to music but i still was not sure if i could make it as an as an artist as a whole that i could become a musician and just live like that because um i still have that in the back of my head in the back of back of my head that my parents were um against that um thought of becoming a full-time musician um so i and at, at one point, when you realize that you're already there and you've become a musician and you've become the, you've done pretty much everything that you they they wanted to do, um, then you start looking back and realizing, well, all those detours, they actually helped me. But maybe I could have done a little bit less detours to, on my way, so I could have maybe focused a bit more on the on the core of the subject. And the most difficult task of, of, of all of this is definitely balancing um, the artistic side of my life with the reality side of my life, which, um, which is something like bookkeeping, taxes, and um, doing all just ordinary things, daily tasks. Um, I have been I have been trying to get up super early for a while and it works, but it also triggers a, a sense of um, yeah, kind of a it also becomes limiting um, once you start um, once you start working as if you were a manager or some or some startup person. Um, so it's it's also not always applicable applicable on the uh, on the artistic life you may you may lose the art spirit that 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 was initially the reason why you started all of this so i tried kind of finding the um, balance between the artistic side which needs this dreamy state of being and um, which is also the reason why why i called it call this um, talk um, listening in dreams because you have to be listening while you're dreaming you have to be you have to pay attention even to your dreams at night you have to be you have to be awake with all kinds of subtle things in life like for example i don't know when i drop this pen it makes noise and uh, and that noise could be could be could be inspirational for something or or I ask, or, or I tell myself, if I forget how the um, the wind sounds in the leaves of a tree, if I forget that, then it means that I need to take take some rest. Or things, very simple things. These are all um, these are all very in inspiring for your daily work as an artist. But on the other side, if you if you focus too much on these things, then you might be um, focused on the pen instead of writing the tax statement or whatever so um there is definitely this duality existent in the in, in in the art life in the artistic life in the musician's life and um i try to for example i try to stay offline always in the um, in the morning until noon or sometimes until the afternoon i'm usually offline i'm not available i'm completely inside my head I, I just try to focus on my work and then after in the afternoon i start doing the calls or 
emails or or various kinds of things. Because also there there was this uh, violinist um, Yasha Heifetz um, who who once said you cannot actually make music more than four hours per day. You can practice a little bit more so you're fluent in with your instrument, but you can't really um, you can't really work more than four hours on music because music work is not just the practicing of the fingers. Um, and in the rest of that time, students should be living their lives or receiving all kinds of inspirations, so they have something to play about. That was the that was a quote by Yesha Heifetz, and I found it always inspiring because if I don't experience anything, if I don't read something interesting, if I don't if I don't live the life that surrounds the artistic life, I I'm. I'll run out of things to put in, inside my art. And um, it's also that balancing thing. It's not only just taking care of the financial parts or looking at the looking at um, tax statements. So it, it, it also feeds back into the art as well. Um, and now if you look at the structures that we have, we have um, it, where I'm active, so I do have a, a couple of uh, personas, let's say, in the, in the music world. On the one side, I'm this composer where I receive commissions by institutions or musicians uh, directly. Musicians directly is my favorite way of working because then I know who's going to play the piece and then I know and I can also just send them fragments of the piece and they'll just play it back and, and send it back to me as a video. So that's usually very um, inspiring. For example, the last one that I wrote for someone was um, Johan Dadin, this um, Scandinavian uh, violinist, um, I think from Sweden. And um, he performed my violin sonata um, a couple of times last summer. Right now I'm writing for a string quartet, Goldmund Quartet, um, who are from Munich. And they asked me to write for their new concert program. And it came directly from them. So there is no agency in between, which is great because we have a much friendlier communication as, as, if, as, if, as opposed to when we had agencies in between and then it would have been much more formal. Um, so as a composer, I also do my own concert programs because I have a stringed ensemble with me on stage. So I play the piano electroacoustically. I have a loudspeaker that goes below the piano which I've also developed. And um, when we go on stage, we do our own concert programs. We also improvise here and there and we have special guests. And um, so that's the one side of my, of my work, which is much more on classical halls, Spe specifically much more in class classical halls, especially in chamber music. I did something with, uh, with, with symphony orchestras, um, with Ensemble Reflector, for example, we also recorded my um, augmented piano concerto. And we played that a couple of times here and there. And um, that one was also commissioned directly from the, from the ensemble, from the orchestra. And when I work in the more um, electronic field, um, then you're dealing more with live sets, you're dealing with clubs, you're dealing with um, festivals like, um, Sonar Festival, or um, there are various um, options to, to go to. I mean, in, especially in Germany or in Berlin, I have so many places to play. Um, for example, tomorrow I'll be playing in Reading in this, um, in this place, um, Panke, it's called. Um, so I'm preparing an electronic set for there. And, and then also the things that I use in that electronic set may come from the commissioned pieces that I have in the in the chamber music. So it's also, I try to combine all of it together, but always have a different approach whenever the project changes. Um, and playing in clubs means also being very close to the underground scene because um, the clubs, even though they're focused on the, um, on the dancing and the party part, um, there is also a fair amount of art in there and especially some some sets they they have much more in common with a contemporary music contemporary um, sound art than um, 
simple party music. So um, I would much rather also like to see those people on stages like Berlin Philharmonic Hall. So this is this was the reason why I started my own label. Uh, since I have this audio engineering background, which is handy in these cases, um, I'm I'm mixing and mastering um, the releases, and I'm also curating the releases. And um, on Feral Note, we're trying to bring people from the from the classical scene together with people from the underground who who are all very focused on sound and, and, and bringing uh, various scenes together but not in a way that it's um, not in a way that it should be just um, someone classical playing and there's a beat below that but it's um, but it's much more much more thinking of okay where is our um, common ground where could we move move to together and how can we figure out a new form of art music where we could find electronics that are as expressive as a cello going on um, in chambered music. And as I already mentioned, the label is a is something that I somehow started doing um, out of um, ideal thoughts, I guess, because I had this access to um to fundings that i um that i've received here in, in germany luckily and um, also i have to mention on my on my way um out from the clubs to the classical halls there was this one funding program for beethoven's 250th birthday um the beethoven it was called and they were giving out grants for a total of 12 um arts or audio projects and and this was something like um, a basic income for three years. So this was the initial start that was super helpful, where I was also much more than the basic income. I was one of one of two resident artists of uh, Center for Media and Arts in Karlsruhe. So I could use all those studios, that multiple grand pianos, and I wasn't actually playing um, that often as a pianist. And there it changed because I had the chance of recording and playing and improvising and trying out and recording again and then listening back and then seeing how does this sound? How can I how can I find my own voice on the piano, which is not necessarily the classical field, but much more my own way of doing things. And this funding um, definitely changed uh, everything. And after getting in there, um, Commissions started to started to come. Also, the Bavarian State Radio they ordered a string quartet, and uh, all kinds of um, um, people started um, noticing me all of a sudden. And um, this was super helpful to to get my way in there. But on the other side, there were also the concerts that I did with my ensemble. For example, the Berlin Philharmonic Hall concert that we did in twenty twenty. Um, and that concert was a hell of a work because um, it was a DIY concert. We were not booked by the hall. We just rented the hall and said, okay, who cares? We'll just do this. <laughs> and um, by doing that, it's um, many people from the industry were at first very um, surprised that this is happening. And then it was Corona <laughs> and then the concert had to had to be moved and it was a huge financial risk and in the end I, I had to pay on top but the rewards that I got from that was um, because of just just because of the fact that I played there the next commission that I got was um, paid twice as good so I had the money back and there from there um, so this was also one of the sides um, where I realized okay it, it does have a mechanism like the um, like the financial system that we're living in. You do have a return on investment, but it's not as um, as um, as sure. I'm, I mean, nothing is sure, but it's a very um, <laughs> it's it's rather difficult to say which things are going to work out and which are not. So because there are also many people who who try to play to the gallery and who try to say, okay, let's 
let's make something that will sell and then it does not and then they have spent their time doing something which they didn't want to do but thought they they would actually make the money with it so they went that way and and, and lost i don't know one or two years doing that um, that's also something that's possible and on the other side you could also argue that um the independence that you have as an artist always um, is also a currency because um, you have to pay your independence. You, you pay by going against the stream. You, you pay by being, being alone. You pay by doing things on your own. You pay by not being in an agency and but deciding about your concert program that you put in there. Whatever you want to add into your concert program, no one's going to tell you what to do. And uh, it is a huge risk, but on the other side, it's super rewarding because you're, you're independent and you can do whatever you want. So summing up, um, I would say um, the work experience, um, if, if I should um, focus more on that is, um, it's always difficult being, doing a work that is not the type that the majority of people are doing. So if you have, if you're living in a city and many things are laid up for people who go to, to a certain type of work and receive, just as a simple example, who receive their money monthly, you will have many um, financing opportunities that are paid monthly. But if you're working as an artist, you earn from work commission to work commission or from concert to concert. So that's not always a monthly that you're getting. Just, just there, you're, you're already um, going away from the, from the stream. And on the other side, you, you have the perks of being very independent and deciding what to do with your time. And if you decide to get up super early and be super productive in the morning, you can do that if you don't want to. Why not? You can, if you work differently, then do as you please. So that's, everything's allowed as long as you find a way of finalizing your works. You just have to figure out how to work with your, with your, um, with yourself because, because you have to also have a certain understanding of how am I capable of finalizing a work? How am I going to bring this to a point of, of, uh, you know, of a su successful completion of this of, of the work um, yeah so that's um, that's definitely um, just talking about it now it reminds me also about the about the, about the great perks that, that come with the with the, uh, with, the uh, with the life of of a musician I haven't to be honest in the in, in recent times, also with this whole um, with the whole pandemic, things were very very um, um, changing and also challenging. But on the other side, you realize okay, we've gotten so far, so we can just keep on doing that. And obviously, with the funding structures in Germany, we're super lucky. But it's it's still being funded is not as nice as having a sold out concert because having a sold out concert or having your work actually being um, being seen as something that gives something to people where they can find themselves. Like um, for example, I'm a, I'm a big fan of David Lynch and, 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 and his movies. For example, what Inland Empire did to me, uh, if someone comes to me, it happened once where someone came to me and said after the concert, this was like, watching Inland Empire by David Lynch. And, and, and I felt like, oh, okay, wow. So I was able to hold the mirror into your inner self and you had a moment with your inner self instead of um, trying to, you know, in, instead of me trying to project a message on someone because it's much more about finding yourself in the music and what I'm doing. So that is something which is much more rewarding than actually just getting a financial funding or this and that. Um, but also on the other side, it has to be somehow um, possible to live off it. Um, to conclude, I would continue with the, um, with the questions. So in case, um, Asli, you want to uh, introduce. Um, so I'm gonna stop recording now.
so that we can sure. start with Q&A.